Okay, good day. We're going to look at question 5 of the November 2013 question paper, which is on work, energy and power. Now, the question tells us we've got a 5 kilogram rigid crate that moves from rest. So again, we have important information here. We've got our initial velocity of the crate and we also have the mass of the crate. It's going to um, go down path X, Y, Z. Section X, Y of the path is frictionless. So I've got a first path of my um, motion that is frictionless and assume that the crate moves in a straight line down the path. So let us start with question 5.1. First of all, state in words the principle of the conservation of mechanical energy. So now the conservation uh, it means I've got the total mechanical energy that will remain constant in a closed system. Alright, then use the principle of the conservation of mechanical energy to calculate the speed of the crate when it reaches point Y. So we already have the initial velocity, but we are actually looking for the final velocity when it reaches Y. Now, let us just look at our information sheet. The conservation of mechanical energy is not written on this uh, information sheet. What we do have is we've got kinetic energy and potential energy. So what you need to know is that mechanical energy consists of kinetic energy and potential energy. And if we look at our question then we've got the top where there is mechanical energy and we've got y where there is also mechanical energy because at this point we can identify potential energy we can identify kinetic in this case it is zero and at point y we can identify potential energy and kinetic energy the we have to calculate the speed. So let us start by writing our formula. Now conservation means it will be the same in the beginning than the end. So I've got kinetic at x plus potential at x. That is mechanical energy at the top and that must be conserved. So I will have kinetic energy at y plus the potential energy at y and that will be the mechanical energy at the bottom and it must be equal because it remains the same or constant. So now we're going to use our formulas from the formula sheet but before you substitute in here kinetic energy is zero, the initial velocity is zero plus here we have a potential which is mgh at x and now we are going to look for the velocity at y plus there's also potential energy at y. It's not on the ground yet, still one meter above. Now we'll just substitute 5 times 9,8 times 5 meters above the ground. Half of 5 times v squared is what we are looking for plus 5 times 9,8 times 1. So now it will be this answer minus that one divide by your 2,5 so 5 comma nine, uh, times 9,8 times 5 minus that 5 times 9,8 times 1 and after you have done that divide it by half of 5 which is 2,5 and that will give you the square and of course the, the square root of everything will give you the velocity of 8,85 meters per second. Right, next question. <clears throat> On reaching point Y, the crate continues to move down section YZ of the path. It experiences an average frictional force of 10 Newton. Frictional force. 
and reaches point Z at a speed of 4 meters per second. So now we can see that the velocity has decreased from the 8,85 that we've just calculated to 4. And the next question asks us about the different forces that are acting here. Because that is what we need to consider before we do any calculations. Apart from friction, write down the, uh, the names of two other forces that act on the crate while it moves down YZ. So let's go and look at our diagram again. So here I have my crate at Y. So now we already know that the friction is always opposite to the movement. This object is moving down. There were no applied force. The only force that helps it to go down is because of gravity. So that will always be your first answer. Force of gravity or gravitational force. And of course, the second force here will be the force of the um, surface on my object, which is your normal force. So that is our two answers. Gravitational force, normal force. Now the next question, section, does the neck force act on the crate as it moves down the section YZ? And we only have to answer from Y to Z or Z to Y. So let's just go back to our diagram. So again, the net force is the force that is the same as the other forces acting together. And that's why they are referring to the forces. We always have to identify that force. So we've got our frictional force. But now gravitational force is not in the same direction. So we don't really use gravitational force. We use the component of gravitation, which we call F parallel. Now these two are in the same direction. I can add them together. For this object to go slower, the net force must be in the opposite direction. So it will be from Z to Y. Then we need to use the work energy theorem to calculate the length of YZ. Now let's go back to our information sheet. Now the work energy theorem is this network that changes the kinetic energy. But now in this case, we have friction force so we don't have a frictionless um, situation anymore. That's why we're going to work with the non-conservative forces. And if you look at, at our diagram once again, you will see that we have potential energy that changes and we have the kinetic energy that changes. So the equation on, on the non-conservative forces which in this case will only be the frictional force is a, the equation we will use and it's similar to that um, work energy theorem because I still have work but now it's only the work done by the non-conservative force which is the friction and it changes the kinetic energy and it changes the potential energy. So we will have a situation where I have final ki uh, kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy, that is for change, plus the final potential energy minus the initial potential energy. And now you cannot leave this open because what it can't be zero, right? So if we look at our information sheet, work is F delta X cos theta. And there's the delta X that we are actually looking for. But then our force is frictional force that we are going to work with because that is our non-conservative force. So we will just put in the frictional force delta X cos theta. And we will write our formula a little bit further because here we will substitute our formulas, we don't have it as energy, we have it as mass and velocities, right, plus 
MGH final minus MGH initial. Now we can start to substitute. Now the frictional force is given as 10. We don't add minus 10 because this cos is going to be our um, direction. So we've got an object moving down the slope but this non-conservative force is working up the slope. That means I have cos 180. If they are in the same direction it is cos 0 but in this case they are in opposite directions so we work with cos 80. And here we will have half of the mass which is 5. The final velocity is 4, 4 squared, minus half of 5, and the initial velocity was the 8,85 square. Don't forget your square roots or your squares, and then plus. Now, here we have final at Z, which is on the ground. So now my potential energy is zero. There it's still one meter above the ground. So the final will be zero minus five times nine comma eight times one. All right. And now it's, you do this calculation, divide by the minus 10. Because cos 180 is just minus one times 10 will give you negative 10 that you will divide on the side. So we will get delta x as 20,48. And then finally, we are asked about um, another crate of mass 10 kilos will now move from x down path x, y, z. How will the velocity of this 10 kilogram crate at point y compare to that of the 5 kilogram crate at y? And we must only answer greater than, smaller than, or equal to. Let's just look at our calculation. If we now Instead of 5, substitute 10 in there, it's going to remain constant. So the mass doesn't really have an influence on the velocity. It will be the same. It will remain the same. And that was question 5.